Lymphedema refers to swelling that generally occurs in the arms or legs caused by a blockage in the lymphatic system. Despite recent medical advancements that address lymphedema, knowledge about this condition is still lacking among the general population. World Lymphedema Day is a patient-driven initiative to make the cure for lymphedema and lymph-related illnesses a global health priority. At MediCircle, which is a healthcare dedicated media portal, we present to you the Lymphedema Awareness Series, wherein we are featuring eminent vascular surgeons, physiotherapists, and plastic surgeons treating lymphedema to help raise awareness for all of the people, to help them find knowledge and innovations that can support them to be able to live their best lives with lymphedema. Hi, I'm Smita Kumar, and today our guest for the show is Dr. Anirudh Bhuya. Dr. Anirudh is a vascular and endovascular surgeon and is the first MCH qualified peripheral vascular surgeon in Mumbai. He's specialized in both open surgeries and interventional endovascular procedures for both arterial, venous, and lymphatic disorders. Dr. Anirudh is currently associated with a lot of hospitals like Holy Spirit, Hinduja, Holy Family, Tata Memorial, and Bharatiya Aarav Kennedy Hospital. He has, been he has been awarded with a lot of awards and has multiple presentations to his credit, both at the national and the international conference levels. Hello, Dr. Anirudh. Welcome to MediCircle. Hi. Uh, so, Dr. Anirudh, as uh, we are doing this lymphedema awareness series, we would like to ask you, what is lymphedema and what are the early signs of lymphedema? Uh, hi. So, lymphedema is primarily a chronic condition which causes swelling in the body, primarily because of fluid accumulation. It can happen in any part of the body, but usually develops more on the arms, legs, and leads to massive swelling. Uh, a lymphedema leg cannot be missed. It's quite clear because it, the skin stretches taut because of fluid accumulation. And it occurs or develops only in the lymphatic system, which is basically a network of channels and glands throughout the body, and which helps in fighting infection and removing the fluid from the body. And when that does not work properly, you get lymphedema. Now, primarily, there are two types of lymphedema. One is primary lymphedema and the other is secondary. Primary is because of the alterations or mutations of the gene responsible for the development of the lymphatic system. And uh, the faulty genes basically cause parts of the lymphatic system uh, for, you know, responsible for draining the fluid to not develop properly and or work as they should. So primary lymphedema goes in the family from father to son to, you know, uh, grandson and thereon. Secondary lymphedema usually lymphatic oh, system. And oh. now it has become damaged because of a multiple amount of causes. It could be due to cancer. It could be due to radiation, post-cancer. It could be because of infections, uh, the commonest being filariasis, because of which there is a parasite, which is a microscopic thread-like worm, which is stuck in the lymphatic system. The adult worms usually live in the human lymphatic system, and they block these lymphatic glands. And it is one of the most common problems which is uh, seen worldwide. Uh, when you term the term lymphedema, it is usually meant as filariasis in a lot of uh, lot part of the world. Yes. Now, the other cause could be inflammation because there are medical conditions which cause a lot of tissue damage and inflammation. And yeah. that causes redness and swelling and can permanently damage the lymphatic system. Uh, there are other conditions which cause lymphedema, which includes the rheumatoid arthritis. It can be eczema. It can be primarily even varicose veins because these are large veins draining. Uh, and when there is poor drainage of blood in these veins, it causes a higher venous pressure and more fluid, fluid which is overthrowing into the surrounding tissue. And because of which you can get it. Uh, even DVT, which is a blood clot, which happens in the veins can cause this problem. Uh, obesity is one of the commonest causes. Any trauma, injury to the legs, any prolonged immobility when a patient is not able to walk or not able to move or the legs are not moving, it can cause the same problem. Uh, in terms of symptoms, uh, the primary symptoms are swelling, aching, any heavy feeling, any difficulty in walking or having a movement, repeated skin infections which are not going. You give antibiotics, it becomes all right, again it comes back. If there is any hard or tight skin, where there are increased skin folds, as also there can be small warts or even fluid leaking from the skin in such conditions. So these are overall the symptoms which we can sort of expect in a patient of lymphedema. 
Uh, one next question is that can it be completely cured? Like, can lymphedema be completely cured? Unfortunately, there is no complete cure for lymphedema. It is usually possible to maintain a control over the main symptoms using techniques which are, you know, minimizing the fluid buildup in the body or it increases the fluid outflow from the body. Now, the main uh, modalities of treatment are usually compression bandages in such conditions. You can complement by exercise by basically moving the fluid out from the affected limb and minimize the fluid buildup. It can be local skin care in terms of keeping the skin in good condition. Exercise of the legs can also be improving the lymphatic drainage. And also there are multiple specialized massage techniques, which is called manual lymphatic drainage, which can actually stimulate the blood flow or flu the lymphatic flow in the system and thus reduce the swelling. So overall, uh, I would say that in all my practice, I've seen lymphedema gets reduced, but never completely cured. Okay. Uh, so what is like the role of surgery? As you being a vascular surgeon, you might have done a lot of uh, surgeries on lymph lymphedema patients. So uh, Now, unfortunately, uh, you know, the role of surgery is also limited. Being a vascular surgeon, a number of patients of lymphedema which we treat or rather which are treatable or, you know, the surgery can be given to a very small subset of patients which, uh, which we can use. So the number of surgeries overall in India for lymphedema is quite limited. But whenever we are doing these surgeries, we aim at number one, removing the sections of excess skin and underlying tissue, which is called optimum debulking and followed by a vacuum dressing, which is something called as a vacuum assisted closure. So when we debulk the entire tissue, we put a machine or a vacuum dressing, which sucks all the excess fluid and thus help in healing. There's also another modality, which is called removal of fat, uh, which is called liposuction, which can be done. That is done by plastic surgeons or plastic colleagues of us. And what we tend to do is a restoration of the fluid around the lymphatic affected system uh, by connecting, say, a lymphatic system to a blood vessel. So that is a norovenous shunt or a lymphovenous shunt. Even we do something called as lymphatic bypasses because we screen a patient of lymph lymphedema with something called as a lymphocentigraphy. So a lymphocentigraphy makes us see the lymphatic flow at one point, lymphatic flow at another point, and we connect, try to connect both the inflow to the outflow. And uh, these have been tried in a few patients uh, with slightly better outcomes. But uh, the main treatment is to help in reducing the size or area of the body affected, but may not completely correct the abnormality which we are treating. So in your experience, like how many times, I mean, the disease comes back if, even after the surgery? It does. It does. Because what happens is lymphedema is usually a stage procedure. You tend to, uh, you know, optimally debulk at one, uh, at one point. And then later on, when you do a surgery, you try to do a corrective surgery. Yes. So it definitely recurs all the time. Okay. It, you, you, usually compression garments are uh, really helpful in okay. such patients. Compression uh, or compression stockings, uh, which are available. There are manual compression pumps, which are available, which actually increase the pressure of the ankle and lesser the pressure in the calf or the thigh and thus have a gradient of flow, which is going from the foot all the way to the thigh. Okay. Uh, one important factor which is associated with lymphedema is uh, weight. So can weight loss improve the condition of such patients? See, obesity is usually one of the primary causes of a secondary lymphedema. And these patients who are se severely obese have definitely an increased risk of developing a swollen body. But it is suggested that, you know, any extra fatty tissue in the abdomen or thigh definitely affects the lymphatic channels by blocking them and thus resulting in a backward pressure and fluid accumulation in the legs. So weight loss is usually an important part of the treatment. Even, uh, you know, if you even start to lose even a slight bit of weight, it can make actually a very big difference to the uh, total amount of swelling in the body. So good exercise, uh, good compression garments usually are adjuncts to, you know, obesity or other treatment of obesity being the primary modality of treatment. Okay. Also, thank you so much, Dr. Anirudh, for sharing the significant information about lymphedema with our viewers today. As a dedicated thank healthcare you. media platform, through these initiatives, we hope we are able to educate a lot of people who are watching this video about the different symptoms and also the treatments of lymphedema. Thank you once again. Thank for you.